Hi, uh, hello everyone, my name is Mebo, um, lesbian from Uganda. Um, I'm here with members from OPAL, Outland Proud African LGBTI. We're here to see uh, at the cinema Soho in Soho to see um, a movie or a documentary by Peter Tacho about his life. It's called Hating Peter. It's, um, it's related to the LGBTI community. That's why we are all here with a few of our members from the group. Um, we have your name? We call it Clement. We have Clement. We have Clement. We have Julius with us. We have Coach with us and a fellow member there as well. And we'll be going into the cinema and then we'll give you we'll be giving you an update later, tell you what has happened, what we've experienced, and we'll be sharing it with you after. See you later. Bye. Introduce you to Mr. Peter Tatcho. Thank you. This is a great account of your life, I think. Uh, and it's about an hour and a half long, but if you could make it just a tiny bit longer, maybe 10 minutes more, what would you include? <laughs> Many things to choose from, but I suppose um, my lobbying of the African National Congress of South Africa in 1987, which resulted in them ditching their homophobia and embracing LGBT plus rights as part of the Freedom Charter. That was a real monumental moment in African history uh, for LGBTs. And of course, subsequent to that, the ANC, their government, did then legislate a new constitution which included, for the first time in the world, a constitutional protection against homophobic discrimination. So that's a really story I'd, I'd love to have told. And of course, I worked with South African black and white LGBT activists to help make that possible. So that's, that's one thing I would have liked to have been in the film. Uh, the film has a kind of chronological timeline. Um, it goes from your beginnings in Australia. Uh, how was it for you to leave Australia at the age of 19 and come into a different country? Well, I'd always want to travel, but the main impetus was, as you saw in the film, I was opposed to Australia's involvement in the Vietnam War. I regarded that as an unjust, immoral war. I wasn't prepared to have anything to do with it. And uh, if I refused to register for the draft, which I did, um, I would have faced two years in prison. Um, part of me thinks I, I probably sh should have gone to prison, but i just fallen in love for the first time, and the idea of being apart from my partner for two years was just too much, so we decided to leave Australia and uh, come to London. Um, the intention was to stay for just maybe a couple of years or more, because already there were signs that the Labour opposition was likely to win the next election, and it was pledged to not only withdraw from Vietnam, but to end the draft, uh, and also to give amnesty. But, you know, uh, I settled here, got a good job, made lots of wonderful friends, got involved in the newly formed Gay Liberation Front, and the rest is history. Yeah, I think you uh, took the words out of my mouth. You supported yourself with the right group of people. So how important was that as soon as you arrived in London? Well, of course, I had my partner, Robert, but um, to be able to be involved in the Gay Liberation Fund was an incredible personal liberation. Before that, I'd been campaigning on issues other than LGBT plus rights. Um, it's true that... Um, I did a little bit of solo, one-person activism in Australia, but nothing really significant. Most of my work was against the death penalty uh, in the state of Victoria, which still had capital punishment, for the 
uh, civil and land rights of indigenous black Australians, and of course against the Vietnam War and the draft. So when I came to London, this was the first opportunity I had a chance to work with other LGBT plus people to fight for our common liberation. And the film is called Hating Peter Tatchell. So I guess somebody must have hated you along the way. Um, they particularly hated your acts of civil uh, disobedience. If you were to do it over again, would you leave something out and do something differently? And if so, what would be the impact now? Well, first let me say that uh, when the director, Christopher Amos, first came up with the idea of doing the film in 2015, he began to do research and look at you know, TV and radio programs where I'd been on and was quite astonished by the level of vitriol and hatred against me, mm. mostly because of my stance on LGBT plus rights, but also on other issues as well. So that's how the title, Hating Peter Tatchell, mm. came about. Mm. Um, in terms of would I do things differently, um, mostly not, but there are some issues that I wish I'd pushed earlier, for example, outing. I know it's very controversial within our community, but um, when we first, in outrage, used outing against Church of England bishops, um, it wasn't because they were closeted and uh, hiding away. It was because they were part of a homophobic church, that they were, in many cases, personally and actively endorsing the church's homophobia, and that was causing great harm to LGBT plus people. So we saw outing as queer self-defense a way of protecting our community by exposing these homophobes and these hypocrites. And it did have a very positive effect. As far as I know, none of those ten bishops ever again ever said anything publicly against the uh, LGBT plus community. It resulted in the then Archbishop of Canterbury, George Carey, appointing a senior bishop to liaise with our community for the very first time, which they'd always previously refused to do, and it did result in some bishops speaking out in support of LGBT plus rights in direct you know, response to the fact that we were saying this church was homophobic and silent about uh, persecution. So... Yeah, um, this movie is really interested and I really enjoyed it because uh, the, the, this uh, Peter, the author of this uh, film really have determination. Peter who? Peter Asher. Peter, Peter Tatos. So he, he have determination since the beginning of the, his life. He, he, at least if they beat him all over, if in Russia, in Russia, in Australia, in the UK, yeah, when he went to the Canterbury Church, the way they beat him, still, he still have full confidence of what is believed that is right. He fight for his own belief that he's, he's a gay man. He doesn't hide his feelings. He doesn't follow the cloud. He follow what is determined as his right for him to do. So I really, really, really at least make a, 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 a try to show the world that whatever you are doing, Doing with your heart, doing with your determination. Okay, what's your name? Hmm? What's your name? My name is Julius Ososake. So, where are you from? I'm from Nigeria. So, how is it to be a gay man in Nigeria? Uh, to be a gay man in Nigeria is, 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 is a talk, it's a talk of war. They don't really accept it, the government don't accept it. Federal government, state government, local government, they don't accept gay man in Nigeria. So if you're caught that you are gay, they will, uh, they will arrest you and they prosecute you at least minimum of 14 years in, in, in jail. Mm. So how has your life been in England? Uh, since I've been in England, at least I, I, I can, I'm, a, I'm an open gay man now. I'm free to go, to, I have a church that they preach, they don't preach against law, uh, against a gay. What church is that? That's, that's a church. So, um, what MCC. What's MCC? MCC, London. What's MCC? MCC is a metropolitan community church mm. for, for gay people, lesbian, gay man. So it's all welcome. They don't preach against it. No discrimination. 
Mm. They preach it as a love that God loves everyone. Mm. So it doesn't matter whatever you be, either you're a gay or lesbian or whatever, you are all welcome. And uh, they preach that there's nowhere in the Bible that Jesus talk against lesbian or gay or uh, homosexual that we no where in Bible. So they touch a good lesson that for us to be concerned okay. about our nice to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, my name's John Clement Lotal Troy. I'm from Uganda. I belong to Opal Group. I'm a gay man from Uganda as well. I've been able to attend today's uh, movie about hating Peter Thatcher. It has been one of the most impressive uh, movie that I've watched. And I've been impressed, especially with his courage and the resilience of what he went through for promoting all the people that he had always in mind, especially about LGBT people and all other groups. And as an activist, Peter Thatcher has been so much bold man. He has been able to challenge himself and challenge others on all sorts of fronts. What has impressed me so much is the way he conducted himself, the way he didn't take it upon himself like, oh, people are doing this, therefore let me give up. He continued doing all that was right. And I believe that whoever sees that movie or whoever has watched that movie, he gets an impression that he is somebody who has been able to prepare others or the next generation to see that and know that, yes, that's what it means to be somebody to run for the good of others. I've been so much happy and I'm so impressed about that and I feel so elevated about that. Thank you very much. So what part did you enjoy most? Uh, the part I enjoyed most was uh, especially when he wanted to challenge himself in the church mm. and then on the po political forum. Mm. Those are two, two separate, like I call them two separate ways. You know, I go back on the church issue, it's the way the church conducts itself and the way they want not to be involved in what is done. They would like to say one thing, like telling you what to do and then not do what they do. So that's one of the challenging moments that I find there's a bit of that hypocrisy uh, within the, the church leaders and among the church people who are saying one thing and they don't do the other thing. Uh, on the political forum, I see Peter Thatcher was so much finding a way of penetrating into the system such that he would make his voices be hard. But of course, the idea was still people would not accept that because people had not really got the, imp the impression or they had not got the whole notion of his work, of what it means to accommodate even an LGBT person or a gay person or a lesbian person being able to share a forum with him or her. So I wasn't really surprised that they would not give him the, the opportunity to lead uh, that uh, and Simon Hsu, who won that election, he himself was gay as well, but he was in closet. Yes, yeah, and that's exactly uh, what I'm saying. That mm. one thing is do what I do, but don't, you know, one law for the other and another law for the other person. But so where are you people, coming from yourself? Pardon? You are from Uganda as well. Yes, I'm from Uganda. I'm from Uganda too. So can you reflect? I mean, what you've seen here to life as a gay man in Uganda? Yeah, if I reflect what I see or what is going on here mm. in comparison to what's going back home. Mm. Uh, here there is that kind, there is that openness, there is that uh, accommodation. Right now, there's, people can accommodate each other. Mm. Uh, people can, uh, they, they can give you uh, support, they can say, they can encourage you. Mm. Because people now have learned here in this country, people have now learned that, yes, it, they, the, the, the notion of being gay or lesbian doesn't make you lesser a human being. So, in comparison to back home in Uganda, it's a different scenario whereby the our people don't get the grips of what somebody is or wants to be. 
they, 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 they take the ideas of what they see from other people, what they borrow from other people, especially what they borrow from the church or mosques or whatever, and then they want to impart it on the what? On the lives of people. So being a gay person, a lesbian person in Uganda is very, very difficult. In England, in England, in England and other countries, it has been even worse because the way I see the movie, Peter Thatcher has gone through a hell of life, beatings and so on. But eventually, with persistence, with persistence, people now begin to know and accommodate and know that really what he's advocating for is right. So I wouldn't... Okay, nice yes. to speak to you, Mr. Rutalo. Rutalo, all the way from Uganda. Thank you very much. Thank oh, you. Thanks. And thank you for the work you have been doing for us. Mm. And uh, I hope you, you follow the example of Peter Thatcher. Because if you have not followed that, Mm. then you would not be able to support us because you have done a lot and you are still doing a lot. So there's a lot of things to be done, a lot to be done, uh, to be achieved. So step by step, mm. you move on and it will be fine. Thank All you. right, thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Yeah. Hi everyone, um, I'm back again. We're just from watching the documentary. It was really inspirational. Personally, I'm very touched. It is, I don't know, it's like um, history of... Um, it's basically the history of Peter Thatcher and how he's been standing up and supporting LGBTI rights. But not only LGBTI rights, but human rights in general. It really is a very inspirational documentary, top movie, and it's worth watching. It's been uploaded on Netflix, you can go and watch it there. It's called Hating Peter Thatcher. It's really an inspirational movie and motivational, and I will recommend it to everyone who is interested. Um, it takes a lot for someone to put himself out there and do what he's doing to support the LGBTI community. And it's really, I just feel like I'm very honored to be part of his circle and to be part of the community as well. And I'm very appreciative of his support. Well, I believe this documentary could, I, um, this documentary could really mean a lot especially to our countries like Uganda where I'm from to create awareness of the LGBTI community because it's not something that's just started recently it's been happening of all for so many years and I believe um, I would like for this documentary to be aired to be shared and to be watched by several people especially from Uganda to create an awareness of what's really happening and how LGBTI community people are being treated and how activists are standing up 